at year nine. I'm just going to work through a couple of problems just to show you and remind you how we can do and use sine, cos, and tan when we're missing one of the sides, if we don't have a side that we know. Let's assume that we're looking for the side here, the value x, and we're told that this side here is 20 millimetres long. We've got an angle of 36 degrees. So this information is given to us. So we now have to say, well, we want to find out what this side x is. How are we going to calculate that? If we go back to this angle, we can say, okay, what information are we interested in? We know the angle. This is now going to be the side opposite. There's three sides that we need to, to understand. From the right angle, opposite the right angle, is always going to be the longest side. The fancy name we call that is the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse here. This is the angle we're looking interested in, and the angle opposite that at the moment is x. And adjacent, which is just really means next to, the side adjacent is here. So we're interested in the side opposite and the hypotenuse. And we go and have a look at our rules here. We've got sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Well, they're actually the two things that we're looking for. So we're going to use this sine rule. And you might have remembered this little uh, series of letters. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So ka tara. Ka cosine cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan equals opposite over adjacent. This time we've said we need to know the uh, opposite. And we already know the hypotenuse. So this is the information here. So we work out the sides we know or are interested in. Opposite, hypotenuse. Choose the correct option. So sine. So let's write and start where I work here. Sine of 36 equals the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now we can substitute some numbers in. So the sine of 36, the side opposite is x, and the hypotenuse is 20 millimetres. We'll come back and put those numbers in. The next thing I'm going to do here is just very fractionally different from the textbook is I'm going to calculate what the sine of 36 is. And this calculator works very similar to your own. Sine 36 equals 0.59. We'll round that up to two decimal places, so 0.59. And we substitute back in here. 0.59 equals x divided by 20. We want to get x by itself, so we can do that by multiplying both sides by 20. So 20 multiplied by 0.59 equals x. And back to our calculator, 20 multiplied by 0.59. Our answer is 11.8. 11.8, and we'll put it in the units, millimetres equals x. And that actually seems pretty reasonable. If this is 20 millimetres, this is the biggest size. So it's got to be smaller, and it's going to be in the same sort of scale. So that works out pretty well. So they're all the steps we have to do to do that problem. So let's start again and do something different, just to have a look at some other information. Instead, here, let's make this 30 millimetres and make the unknown x down here. So what have we got? We know what this angle is. We know we've still got the hypotenuse. This time we've got the side adjacent or next to the angle. So if we're looking into an adjacent and hypotenuse, we're going to come down here and say it is the cos rule that we're going to work with. So the cos of 36 is going to equal the Adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Substituting the other numbers in, cos of 36 equals x divided by 30. Now we're going to do the calculation. I'm going to work out the cos of 36. Same way you do in your calculators, cos 36. 0.81 to two decimal places because this 9 will be rounded up. So 0 0.81, 0 0.81 equals x divided by 30. We really want to know what x is, 
So if we multiply both sides by 30, we can get x by itself. So 30 times 0.81 equals x. And when we pop that into our calculator, 30 multiplied by 0.81 gives us 24.3. So 24.3 millimeters equals x. And once again, I want to check that that's reasonable. I'd say, well, if the hypotenuse is 30, it can't be bigger than that. It's smaller. Yeah, that seems to make pretty good sense for us there. So let's have a look at one more of these. And in this case, let's say x is over here. And this time, let's say in this triangle, this is worth 20, this is 24 centimetres long. And we'll change the angle up this time, so make it 50 degrees. So let's have a look at what we've got, what we're interested in. We know the angle. We're interested in the side opposite our angle. And we've also been given the side next to or adjacent. So if we've got opposite and adjacent, we're looking at tan. So we're going to say that tan of 50 is going to equal x the side opposite divided by 24. Well, I'll put the, I'll put the, do what we've been doing. We've been putting the rule in opposite divided by adjacent. And now we'll substitute the numbers in. So tan of 50 equals the side opposite is x divided by the side adjacent, which is 24. Next step now, I'm going to calculate what the tan of 50 is. So tan 50 is 1.19. So 1.19 equals x divided by 24. And if we calculate, we're going to work out what x is. We multiply both sides by 24 to get rid of the denominator here. So 1.19 multiplied by 24. 1.19 multiplied by 24 gives us 28.56. 28.56 centimetres equals x. Now, as we've gone through these, I've done it in a way that we've always been looking for the, the top part, the numerator of the fraction. Right, so in a sign, we're looking for the opposite. Cos we're looking for adjacent, tan we were looking for opposite. Here's going to do three using each sign, and this time we're going to look for the opposite of those signs. So let's start, let's leave it as uh, 50 degrees. This time we're going to be looking for the hypotenuse, and let's say this is 25 kilometres. We've got a much bigger triangle on our hand, perhaps we're measuring a paddock. So what have we got? Here's our angle here. We know the side opposite, and we're looking for the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, it looks like we're working with sine. So we're going to say it's the sine. So we're going to say sine of 50 equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. Let's substitute in the numbers we know. The opposite here is going to be 25 kilometers divided by x, which we don't know. Let's calculate sine of 50. We know that that's pretty easy to do. So let's go sine 50 equals 0.77. So 0.77 equals 25 divided by x. We want to get x by itself. We can do this by multiplying both sides of the equation by x. So we've got 0.77x equals 25. The last thing we have to do to get x by itself is divide both sides by 0.7. So 0.77x divided by 0.7, that's just leave with x equals 25 divided by 0.7. So x equals 
25 divided by 0.77. So 25 divided by 0.7, we have to go back to the calculator. 25 divided by 0.77 equals 32.47, if we round to two decimal places. 32.47. X equals 32.47, and we go back to our units of kilometres. And that makes sense. The hypotenuse has to be bigger than the side, so that seems to be a reasonable answer. The only difference in this was just a little bit of difference in the algebra to actually calculate what x is by itself. Let's go on to a different one here. Let's say instead of knowing this side, let's go 30 centimetres here and change the angle up, make it a little bit uh, different. Let's make it 47 degrees. We get rid of our working from the last one, and we start fresh. So we're saying, okay, this is our angle here. We know the side adjacent, or next to the angle, and we know the hypotenuse. So we know adjacent hypotenuse, we're using cos. So we're going to say cos 47 equals adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. Let's put the numbers in. Cos of 47 side adjacent next to is 30 divided by x. I'm going to calculate what the cos is, if I can remember what we're calculating, cos of 47. So let's go cosine 47 equals 0.68. So we've got 0.68 equals 30 divided by x. We want to find out what x equals. To get x out of the bottom of the denominator of this fraction here, we can multiply both sides of the equation by x. So 0.68x equals 30. And then, if we divide both sides by 0.68, we're going to get x by itself. So 0.68x divided by 0.68 is going to give us x equals 30 divided by 0.68. And we go back to our calculator, 30, 30 divided by 0.68 equals 44.12. X equals 44.12 centimetres. And again, just checking that that's a reasonable answer. Hypotenuse has got to be bigger than that side. That seems to be pretty good. We've got one more, and we've done an example of each of these six unknown sides. So let's say in this, in this case, this is our unknown here, and this is going to be 40 metres. Change the angle just to uh, have a look at how things look differently, 25 degrees. So what are we working with? We know what the side opposite is, and we know we're looking for the side adjacent. So where we're looking for opposite over adjacent, we're looking for tan. So tan of 25 is going to equal the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. Let's put those numbers in. Tan, tan of 25. The side opposite is 40 metres. And the side next to it is the unknown x. Let's calculate the tan. I'll just check what angle we're using of 25. Tan of 25 equals 0.47 rounded to two decimal places because it's 0.466. Go to two decimal places, we round up there. So 0.47, 0.47 equals 40 divided by x. Now we want to get x by itself. So we can multiply both sides of the equation by x. So 40x divided by x, the two x's are going to cancel out. This is going to leave us 40 on this side. On this side, it's going to be 0.47x. So 0.47x equals 40. Now to get x by itself, we have these 